uh, your holinesses, uh, uh, most venerables, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was asked to speak for four or five minutes and it is the most difficult thing. If I was given 30 minutes, it would have been very easy. Uh, it would have been easier if I had, a uh, little less easy if I had been given 10 minutes or so, but to s say something useful in five minutes is uh, uh, so difficult, but uh, uh, I have to try because it's a great honor, uh, because it's a great honor. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, some thoughts that quickly occurred to me uh, could uh, be a, a, a privilege for me and perhaps uh, some um, thinking about uh, the uh, great conference I just attended. Uh, the monks, whether they are in small numbers or big numbers, uh, are usually uh, referred as the gathering of the ocean of monks. Uh, they may be just hundred, but still this is the respectful way you refer to the gathering of any monks, anywhere. So the ocean of gathering of monks. Uh, in my humble observation of being the first participant in this uh, Vaisak uh, celebration, I truly notice uh, this is a great gathering of monks and scholars uh, and institutional leaders of certain schools of Buddhism from all over the world, as from some 80 countries. It is unprecedented. Uh, it's unprecedented gathering of Buddhist leadership uh, that's emerging all around the world. Uh, and the, my thought immediately, the nature of the, and the scope of gatherings like this, uh, really my thoughts became a bit historical uh, to retrospectively think about the great Buddhist councils, first council, second council, third council, fourth council, and so on and so forth, held in ancient India, as you know, uh, in Rajagriya, Vaisali, Pataliputra, under various kings like Ajasatru, Akasloksa, Ashoka, Kanishka, and so on and so forth. The subject matter of all such councils could be summarized as two. The subject matter of all those councils, as you know, all the Buddhist leaders are fully aware, were either on matters of programs of Buddhism for the future. So this is the question of uh, doctrine or the what to do in future. And the second important issue of all these great councils was method or procedures of how to do it. Since all great organizations to move forward need some sort of procedures and discipline. So the second issue all these Buddhist gatherings uh, dealt was the question of rules or discipline in order to move forward. And of course, your excellencies, distinguished guests, all know how these councils then divided various uh, issues they discuss into the three great baskets, you know, about rules or constitutions and procedures on the one hand, on great matters of philosophy on the second hand, and lastly, sort of, sort of methods and explanation in terms of sutras and so on and so forth. So, my humble reflection of the past two days is that since his 
most excellent uh, arahat, I would say, successor arahat, Professor Dr. Fra Bhamabhutra, just like an arahat, we have 16, you know, starting from uh, Agagiriya to Abhidya. So, just like that, he has been a pioneer, tremendous pioneer, in, for the first time, during the time of great consolidation of Buddhism in the last 50 years, that he has been able to tap and bring all of us together into this convergent platform in the celebration, obviously, but underlying it, what is the program for future of Buddhism of all schools? And we draw lesson from all these councils that Buddhism, with its widest freedom of practice that is suited to every individual in different countries, in different race, in different political system, economic system, many wheels, many cock wheels. But still, we would need some unifying drive towards the future that has been unleashed by the awakening in the last 50 years. Quick accelerating expansion of Buddhism is taking place. And there is no doubt that it will, it will expand in diversified forms as we go forward, but still some unifying drive will be necessary. And in that respect, in that respect, I uh, talk, took this opportunity for five minutes to say a few words about the path forward according to my humble aspiration and prayer. There are two paths. One is the geographical path, you know, uh, the, the physical path. And physical path also determines the journey. And in third to sixth century, the physical path provided by so-called six a silk Road was the greatest path of expansion of Buddhism. It traveled all main roads and side roads and tertiary roads precipitated by the Silk Road. And thus it became the greatest system of culture in the world at that moment, embraced by the greatest number of people on earth between 3rd to 6th century, I think. And then, of course, it collapsed slowly. But the other path I am about to talk is the path of prayer. It also is a way of uh, shaping our journeys, our Buddhist journey, which is, uh, which is part of a long journey, as you have heard all the time, of 2,561 years journey. And all bodhisattvas, all arthas, all uh, those emerging B Buddhas travel by this road. So my, I'm just here to express what we might be doing uh, rapidly in the immediate future, uh, how to take on. And I see in that respect, this forum, this movement uh, generated by Thailand and Prabhama Pandit as the sort of central wheel to do so. Well, I think uh, for the Buddhist practitioners, nothing need to be said. Uh, 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 your most excellent uh, uh, leaders of various schools, branches, sub-branches of Buddhism are much aware. But if we draw a parallel from the most summarize ingredients of Buddhism in terms of Tripitakas, Vinayas, and Sutras, Abhidhamma, and so on and so forth. I think the next sort of non-dogmatic interpretive, but at the same time useful adaptations would be for us also to think in terms of 
the ch challenges as many speakers uh, took up this morning and yesterday of the modern world. Our life is, are divided into essentially two parts. Well, actually three parts, but let us forget about the sleeping part. Uh, this part of our life as family members for eight, nine hours, and as workers as, uh, for eight, nine hours every day in our short life of 70 years or so. I think we have to offer something above, over and above the practices as family members, as individuals. That is to say that we are increasingly coming against very big institutions and that we may have to attempt to think about how dialogue we will hold, not amongst Buddhists alone, but against, uh, with those big binayas in our life. The big binayas in our life are the economic process and procedures, the system, trade process and procedures. Uh, I, we discussed quite a lot yesterday about education and health, where Buddhism had a great deal to contribute in terms of psychotherapy, uh, in terms of education. And the third, we also discussed a little bit yesterday about the role we could play in the environment. It was very diffuse uh, in every speech. But above and above that, I think three, four subjects we have to deal are the world trading system, the economic system, uh, and uh, financial system, because it is the engine which is driving trade as well as economy. So I, I, I would like to uh, wish uh, that uh, the great uh, leaders here would think about that from an interpretive Buddhist point of view, uh, sort of some kind of modern vinaya for finance, banking, trade, economy, etc. Uh, others were considered day before yesterday. Uh, uh, so I, I would like to summarize once again that all Buddhist councils dealt with two things, programs or doctrine on the one hand and discipline or procedure on the other. Uh, it is marvelous that this kind of gathering has been uh, anchored by uh, Thai government, MCU, and in particular uh, uh, pioneering Buddhists uh, in the figure of Pramapam Putra. But we have to move, I think, I, I hope we will move very quickly into also developing some sort of greater content in terms of uh, programs, what to do. I thank you for this great opportunity. Uh, I'm sorry I took more than five minutes and maybe uh, said something totally irrelevant, I uh, seek your forgiveness. Thank you.